Good afternoon, all. I'd like to welcome you to this meeting this afternoon. And Ms. Byram, could we have roll call, please? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Anderson? Here. Mr. Hopkins? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Page? Here. Ms. Quintern? Here. Madam Chair, the clerk certifies the presence of a quorum. Thank you very much. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, Dr. Hornick, is there any adjustments needed to the agenda? No, ma'am. Um, hearing no adjustments, I'd like a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Can I have a second? A second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Dropping down to the consent agenda, the minutes and financial reports of. Let's see, let me find it here. Oh, sorry. Oh, you've got it with you. I've got it somewhere. You ready for a motion, ma'am? Yes, ma yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. I make a motion. We approve the minutes of June 27th, uh, the minutes of July 18th, uh, the financial report uh, for July 2022, and the monthly food service report as presented. Thank you. Can I have a second? A second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Now dropping down to the monthly operating bills, and I think Mr. Hopkins and Ms. Quintern uh, reviewed those. Uh, Madam Chairman, I make a motion we ap approve paying the bills for the month in the amount of $5,904,457.06. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. So at this time, I will drop down to public comment, and I will open public comment at this time. Ms. Byron. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I'm going to follow what we did last time, call up two speakers at a time so they can be ready. Okay. So the first two speakers uh, is, are Kim Hoosier and Miles Johnson. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight and to civically engage with the board. Thank you for striking down Mr. Hopkins' suggestion to limit public comment to 30 minutes as this would be just a way to, to limit public discourse, engagement, and try to silence the voice of the people. I've come to this board and tried to logically explain why the proposed resolutions should not be passed. I've tried to explain that the terms you use are intentionally vague and have no academic merit. The correlations that your proposals make are not only uneducated, but if implemented, harmful. I've also come before you and argued with a motion. I've stated that I'm angry about your resolutions and that they are clearly trying to push a political agenda, which this board has no business of pushing. Your resolutions have divided this community in a way that I have never seen before in all the years that my children have attended public school. Your resolutions have literally made students cry and caused excellent teachers to leave. We have always had an issue of teacher retention due to low wages, but never before has a mass teacher exodus happened because of your decisions. This is something so regretful and was completely preventable. The fact now that my children's education will suffer because of your reckless actions makes me very angry and upset. However, since logic and emotion do not seem to impact the board, tonight I want to try something a little bit different, an exercise in perspective. If I hold this up, what do you see? You see a color, and you are 100% sure that what you see is reality. It is what you've known to be true, and no one can change your mind as to what you see. However, what if others started telling you that your ideas are incomplete, 
They do not fully represent the truth. And what you see is very different maybe than what you think you see. Would you reconsider? Would you start to think differently? Would you question your perception? Would you be willing to admit that you might be inaccurate? Would you engage in the same critical thought that we stress to our students all through public education? This is what I'm asking you to do tonight, to think, to think about what others are saying and that your opinions are not representative of the community and are actually harmful to the students. I'm asking you to question your perception and realize when you're willing to see a different viewpoint and to listen to the different voices, you may just realize that your perception is not at all what you think. You may see something one way, but other people see it and experience it very differently. Being able to recognize this is what educated leaders do, and it's what I'm begging you to do tonight. Do the right thing, admit that these resolutions were wrongheaded, and recall the divisive content resolution, and discard the sexually explicit resolution. Thank you. Hello, I'm Miles Johnson. I'm a resident of, the, of District 4. I first spoke in May against the two ignorant policies literally two days after I got home from college. It is now August. I am now getting ready to go back to college. And all I have seen from the majority of the school board is how good you are at dividing a community. You want to take critical race theory out of the curriculum, which does not even exist in Orange County Public Schools. You want to ban material for its divisiveness but yet here you are being one of the most polarizing people we have ever seen in our community. You have yet to clearly state what critical race theory material is. So as a black man in America, the only thing I can assume is you want to remove all of my people's history. It's disrespectful to sit there and silence the history of my ancestors who, who fought for this country. It is disrespectful to my great grandfather Thaddeus, Thaddeus Johnson who helped draw up the plan to build Prospect Heights and later on helped deseg desegregate schools in Orange County. It is disrespectful to my Uncle Charles Johnson, who put his life on the line to fight for his country in the Korean War. It is disrespectful to my grandfather, Evelyn Fry, and hold on. <laughs> it is disrespectful to my grandfather, Evelyn Fry, and grandfather, James Johnson Sr., who had to endure segregated schools in Orange. You clearly have no knowledge of critical race theory. theory I'm sorry. You clearly have no knowledge of critical race theory because someone on the school board compared CRT to Marxism. How are you supposed to be the le leaders of education if you refuse to be educated yourself? Thank you. The next two speakers are Sarah Yeager and Rob Patera. Hello again. I'm speaking up tonight against the idea Mr. Hopkins mentioned he would discuss with lawyers at last week's school board meeting. Following the conservative and out of line trend in the currently biased Supreme Court, Mr. Hopkins intends to try to further blur the separation of church and state. The free and critically thinking individuals of this town, state, and country will continue fighting against partisan agendas aimed at destroying religious freedom and religious neutrality. Not to mention leading prayers before sports games violates the Constitution of Virginia's Bill of Rights. Section 16 states that no man shall be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship, place, or ministry whatsoever. It shall be left free to every person to select his religious instructor. To paraphrase the ACLU, the separation of church and state is a core component of religious liberty. James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, and other of our nation's founders recognized that religious freedom thrives best when government officials don't tip the scales toward their favored religious beliefs. Section INDC of the Orange County Public School Policy Manual states that schools assume no role or responsibility for the religious training of any students and do not become involved in the religious belief, disbelief, or doubt of any students. This neutrality does not preclude or hinder the OC school division in fulfilling its responsibility to educate students to be tolerant and respectful of religious diversity. The division 
approaches religion from an objective, curriculum-related perspective, encouraging all students and staff members to be aware of the diversity of beliefs and respectful of each other's religious and or non-religious views. There are so many ways to motivate and inspire classrooms and sports teams without showing preference to one particular religion's rules and practices. A motivational speaker sharing universal truths based on principles of love, hope, perseverance, strength, faith, and courage holds so much more weight and reaches so many more hearts than explicit prayers that may alienate individuals of differing religions or beliefs. If you allow coaches to lead prayers, there must be an opportunity for all religions to be represented equally. Do you really want your football players learning Islamic, Buddhist, Satanic, Hindu, Native American, Jewish, and every other kind of prayer at Friday games, or do you actually just want Christian indoctrination? Ask any of today's public school teachers about the backlash they've already experienced when religion is brought up in the classroom. Expect it to increase exponentially if you continue to openly force solely the Christian religion into public schools. If you so strongly believe in parents' rights and responsibility to teach concepts of gender, sexual orientation, and racial equity to our own children, then you must also allow discussions of religion to remain solely up to parents to decide and engage in with their children. Good evening, everyone. I come before you tonight as a frustrated and confused parent of two Orange County public school students. I'm confused because in Virginia, the school board positions are supposed to be nonpartisan. It would be great if more members of this school board would start acting that way. Mr. Hopkins, if memory serves me correctly, you are the reason the golden rule is displayed in Orange County Public Schools across the county. In my opinion, it's time for all of you to treat others the way you want to be treated. You want to be treated fairly. I define fair as everyone gets what they need to be successful. Because of COVID and other factors, there are huge gaps in students' education. I want you to put more focus on ensuring that all Orange County Public School students get a fair and equitable education. You want to be recognized and accepted for what you are. It's really confusing when you type. I don't know if you're taking notes, but um, it'd be great if you could just listen. You want to be recognized and accepted for who you are and how you identify. You should leave the current sexually explicit policy in place. It is more than sufficient. I want you to put more focus on ensuring all Orange County Public School students are recognized and accepted for who they are and how they identify. You want your story and your culture to be represented in the history and curriculum being taught. I want you to put more focus on ensuring that the African American story and culture are being correctly represented in the history and curriculum being taught in Orange County Public Schools. History should tell the story of all sides. Slavery was divisive. The Civil War was divisive. The fight for civil rights was divisive. Discrimination past and current is divisive. The truth needs to be taught so that all learn from the mistakes of the past to ensure a better future. The divisive content resolution you just passed is divisive. I want you to get rid of this resolution. I want you to stop focusing on the misinformation about CRT in Orange County Public Schools. It is not being taught here. It is a graduate level college course. Instead, I want you to put more focus on improving the CTE program. This is critical for the success of Orange County Public School students. I want you to stop focusing on pushing national divisive political issues into our nonpartisan local school board. As my representative, Mike, I'm counting on you to bridge this gap and to bring the focus back to what's important, the kids. What's best for all of the Orange County Public School students? There is real work to be done. Am I done? Can I have a few seconds since I was distracted earlier, or is that okay? No, I'm no. sorry. Okay. The next two speakers are Janie Latham and Alyssa Waller. Hello, 
I'm here to talk again about the sexually, sexually explicit materials resolution. Um, parents, no matter how close you are with your children, whether you have daddy's little girl, mama's boy, or a Velcro kid always at your side, there will come a time when you are no longer your child's first choice of confidant. Those of us who have them know teenagers are prickly beings, and that is especially true when it comes to their parents. As hard as this can be to accept, after spending more than a decade pouring love and time into our kids, the reality is it's normal, healthy human development for teens to pull away from their parents as they strive for autonomy. With that in mind, I'd like you to consider this statement. There are some things about me my parents don't know. In a study by Steinberg and Silverberg, children between fifth and eighth grade show a marked increase in agreeing with this. If you have a teen, it's almost guaranteed there are things about your child you don't know. Now consider what your child hears in your home or church. Your teen loves you, they don't want to disappoint you. They crave your approval and acceptance. They fear being rejected by you or their church family. Thus, they may be particularly unlikely to share their questions about gender or sexual identity with you. Parents and school board members, you need to know there is an association between increased suicidal thoughts and questioning teens with internalized homophobia or who fear losing their families or church community. It's critically important these students have someone to talk to. Another form of support is being able to access information. Children need to be able to check out reading materials from their age-appropriate school libraries without requiring parental permission. For all the reasons mentioned above, a child whose parents receive a log might fear rejection for what they choose to read. All students should be equally able to express themselves at school. No student should have to self-edit conversations for fear an eavesdropping teacher will call their parent about their sexuality or gender. As Mr. Hopkins noted in a recent Late Currents article, the Supreme Court 1969 Tinker decision states students do not shed their constitutional right to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. Mr. Hopkins, it's good to see that you are familiar with students' constitutional rights. Keep in mind these rights include gender and sexual identity as well as prayer. All parents want what is best for their children and all want to know what is going on in their lives. However, the result of compelling school employees to notify parents about gender or sexual identity in effect removes the one place kids may have for support. This resolution so makes it so if your child won't come to you, they can't go to anyone. This is selfish and it's dangerous. I want my kids to come to me, but what I want more is for them to be properly supported during difficult times in their lives. What's worse is the resolution makes this decision for all parents, even ones who want their children to be able to reach out to a trusted adult. In the end, is a dead child worse than a child who is questioning their gender or sexuality? Unfortunately, that is far too often the outcome of a questioning child with inadequate support. Just before I start my comment, I wanted to give a public um, acknowledgement of appreciation to our superintendent, um, Hornick. He came out this past weekend to a public event, um, Picnic in the Park, that was hosted by the NAACP and ASI, and he gave a phenomenal speech. I was roaming around as he was speaking, and the buzz was really going about what an excellent person that he thought that they thought they now had to represent Orange County Schools. So I just wanted to say thank you. It mattered. <laughs> Good evening, Superintendent, Madam Chair, School Board, and all in attendance. Month after month, I've listened to members of the community and school system speaking out and looking for responses from the board and school administration or at the minimum, a meeting of the minds in an organizational fashion to come up with solutions that are beneficial to the children you all govern over. Unfortunately, yet understandably, considering the topics and motives, I haven't seen much follow up, follow through on your part. It almost seems fruitile to even bring concerns and questions to you all when no transparency or feedback is provided as to where we stand in the, on the solutions. I understand the impossibility of pleasing everyone, but it is clear Pandora's box was opened when resolutions were presented and were ambiguous and also redundant considering such policies are already in place. On a Facebook post posted just a little over 24 hours ago, Mrs. Quintern admits the CRT is not being taught in Orange County Public Schools in response to an Orange County High School alumni who mentioned this in the comments. She did, however, bring up educating and training the teachers through the lens of CRT. 
and the Department of Education was riddled with it until a new administration took over. As a former instructional assistant from firsthand experience, I can say being able to relate to your students is imperative and being able to teach them and reach them. Then the curriculum, all, with the curriculum that all parents and staff are made aware of year after year. Also, also mentioned was the teaching of fact-based and not watered down American history because contrary to the lens of some conservatives, African-American history is still American history. She stated this was a violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. It is my humble opinion that professional development training on diversity, equity, and inclusion would benefit the staff administration of Orange County Public Schools as well as members of the school board. I do understand how the telling of history can be very uncomfortable for children who have not been raised in an environment filled with racist education that instead judge people by the content of their character. However, there are teachable moments on empathy and compassion, as well as when we know, when we know better, we do better. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Um, Please keep in mind that you would like to keep the innocence of white children in the same instance. The innocence of black children, black and brown students are being lost. Year after year, lessons are given that only teach black children they were only victims and eliminate telling the victorious tales of such as Black Wall Street and just how many inventions were done by people of color or just how different the world would be without them being part of our history. Your minority population deserves your respect and concern as much as their white classmates. Instead of polluting social media and local newspapers with divisive content, consider striking down the vague proposal and divisive content, content and focus withdrawing the vague proposal on explicit content. Ms. Waller, yes, I'm sorry. And, community, and bridge gaps with You're the community members and discuss things that will make solutions, not problems. The next two speakers are Laura Daniel and Juliet Daniel. Good evening, superintendent and school board members. Mr. Hopkins, you are quoted in an email stating, quote, the public and I consider the Orange County School Board out of control if we continue to have two or three hour public comments, end quote. First, I'd like to ask what public, because clearly the public is getting up here continuously and pleading with you guys and the rest of the school board members to actually listen to us. Instead, you continue to push your own little narrative about things, even going so far as to attack your fellow school board member. In, an, in the email, and I quote, you are saying, I gave the board an opportunity to limit debate and you chose not to do so. Every single board member sat up there and expressed why they didn't want to limit public comment and all came to an agreement. So I still don't know why you attacked your fellow school board member with the exception of she didn't play along with you like you wanted her to and pushing your little conservative agenda. Mr. Hopkins and other school board members, if you do not like how long the meetings are going to take or what is being said, or the fact that you can no longer go about your business without public oversight, then I urge you to step down and allow someone else to sit up there. You have lost the privilege to guide us and you are certainly not representing us accurately. I said at the last public comment meeting that representation matters. And because the board sitting up there lacks a good representation of our community, then it is especially important that the school board member listens truly listen to what the community is saying and not just the Republican Committee of Orange County or the conservative parents of Orange County group on Facebook. Your community, this community, exists beyond those little groups and deserves to be heard. The board is failing to do that. Do better. We have continuously spoken out against the divisive resolution that passed. It is racist, even if you don't see it. The community have, has expressed their concerns and continue to express their concerns. Kids and parents stood in front of you pleading with you and yet you still haven't listened. 
We have continuously spoken out against the sexually explicit content resolution. We stated time and time again that we have a policy in place. Instead, what Ms. Quintern did with the resolution is change the sexually explicit content issue and launched a personal attack on the LGBTQIA community. The community and I will not stop. We will continue to repeat ourselves until you listen. Homosexuality is not sexually explicit, at least no more than heterosexuality. Outing a student is dangerous and against guidance. And gender identification is not a choice you have a say in, including denying them on how they identify. And if that violates your religion or personal beliefs, then you need to step aside because you cannot fulfill your public servant role. Because this is not about you. This is about our community, all of our community. If parents are against this, then please exit the door and support your religion. Thank you. Man, how do I follow that up? Um, that was my mom, guys. Hello, my name is Julia Daniel, and I'm from District 5. I'm first going to talk about the divisive content resolution that's passed. I would like for it to be reversed. As we become well aware, critical race theory is not in Orange County Public Schools, and many argue that if it truly is not in Orange, then why do so many people have a problem with the resolution passing? If the resolution is unnecessary, then why does it matter? Well, it matters because critical race theory is not, it matter, well, it matters not because critical race theory is in Orange schools, but because the resolution is vague, and the very wording of the resolution allows it to be open to interpretation. What exactly is divisive content? The lack, of over, the lack of overall description leaves many in the community questioning the resolution's true purpose. I'd also like to bring up the sexually explicit content resolution. I think that resolution, at the very least, needs to be reworked, clarified, and include an actual thought-out procedure instead of lacking clarity. Needless to say, I don't think the resolution should be passed regardless. The very few whom we've heard are for the resolution claim that those whom are speaking out are misinterpreting the resolutions. But doesn't that just reflect those that wrote them and the lack of understanding the board has of the LGBTQ plus community? Instead of dismissing us for misinterpretation, please consider how the resolution is being misinterpreted, why is it being misinterpreted, and what can you do to fix it? Furthermore, there's not much to misinterpret. This resolution will allow you to out kids, correct? So by us saying it's detrimental to children, that's a fact. How many students have come up here and told you these resolutions would hurt them and their friends? Regardless of the intention, you are putting children in danger. Moreover, what is the procedure for notifying parents on how a student identifies? Will it be a teacher's responsibility on top of classroom management and grading and everything else to notify parents? What about if a student tells a teacher how another student identifies? What about that? Will there be repercussions on students who lie about how someone identifies as a way to bully another student? What exactly are the bounds of self-identification? Because it applies to everything. If a kid is asked what hair color they have and they say blonde, are parents notified because their student identifies as blonde haired? If I say I love Taylor Swift, are my parents gonna get a phone call home saying I'm self-proclaimed Taylor Swift fan? I'm assuming that these, I'm assuming not, but that's the thing with these resolutions. It leaves readers to make assumptions on how they work. So will it apply to religion, favorite colors, et cetera, or just sexuality and gender. Lastly, I'd like to reiterate how when the board fails to represent its community, it fails its community. And the only way to tolerate diversity is to teach tolerance of diversity. With all that the board has been recently pushing, perhaps it's time for a refresher class on sensitivity and diversity training. Thank you. The next two speakers are Alan Daniel and Will Daniel. Superintendent Hornick, school board members, I'm here to address the board on my concerns about quite a few issues that have been going on with the school board policies and practices. As you've heard me multiple times since its passing, you need to revert the code of conduct to what it was before it changed in January. A code of conduct that says you can simply consider laws instead of obeying laws is just crazy. The board needs to bring up divisive content resolution back up for revote and strike it down. I wanted to ask questions about if events such as the Tuskegee experiments, Utado uprising, 
Or how about the bombing of Shashu Nation, where the U.S. tested nukes on tribal territory? Or how about when the U.S. bombed the Move Black Liberation Group, which were U.S. citizens, in Philadelphia in 1985, not to mention the more recent events on the countless events or the countless others? Will these still be taught? We have to be able to address difficult issues from our past so we can address them, recognize them, and learn from our mistakes so we do not make them again. We need to teach true history. The sexually explicit content resolution needs to be dropped. That resolution was brought forth. It's just horrible. Orange County has policies already in place to meet Senate Bill 656 without the anti-LGBTQIA crap. Some, of, some will defend this resolution, will do so under the guise of parental rights. But two of the most vocal ones that we have seen are that were in favor of the resolution, their children graduated years ago. Instead, you have many parents with children in the school district now speaking out against this resolution. Speaking of resolutions, how about making a resolution about acceptable email use and not forwarding emails to those outside of the school system, as well as not forwarding school board information to personal accounts. Do not forward my emails to your husband, Buck Anderson. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson. How about not forwarding my wife's emails to him either? How about not forwarding my daughter's email to him? Who was under 18 at that time? Ask your lawyer if that was a smart choice. I hope you kept all those emails. Your personal email account is now subject to FOIA. Now about the Kennedy decision of the Supreme Court. I am not sure people understand the implications that that has. I think most assume that everyone in the U.S. is the same religion or something. The U.S. is not a theocracy and is, there is no one religion. So as you were happy thinking about Christian prayers are allowed in school, I hope you realize that all religions, all prayers are allowed the same way and anything short is a lawsuit. Mr. Hopkins wrote a letter to the Lake Currents in which he mentions a good news club and how it was ran by Lake of the Woods Church. I'm not sure how familiar everyone is, but there are other religious organizations that have after school programs as well. I would hope that uh, one religious, if one religious organization is allowed in the schools, the others would be allowed too. One organization I can think of is a satanic temple who has an after school program called the After School Satan. It's a lot like the Good News Club, but it doesn't seek to groom or indoctrinate children into a religion. Thank you. Hi, I'm William Daniel, and I want you to look at who showed up against these resolutions. Look, not at me, look at them. Look at who showed up against these resolutions. I see you, you're still looking at me, look at them. And yet, so many of you still support these racist and homophobic resolutions. We won't stand down and we will not stop. So many more people showed up here against these resolutions than the people who showed up for these resolutions. I hope you can see that. The next two speakers are Ellen Wessel and Richard Clore. Good evening. This is kind of getting redundant, I guess. This is my third time at BAT and the third time in opposition, in opposition to the two resolutions that we've all become way too familiar with. Um, I also want to note that elections do have consequences and this board flipped to a different side of the political spectrum, I'd say, um, with this last election. What's curious to me is that um, in 2020, we had a resolution presented by the school board and it was a motion from Jim Hopkins. And I wanna read it because I would like to recommend this be the resolution that is revived to replace the divisive content resolution. So this was, um, this was a special meeting of the board um, on June 15th, 2020. And I'm gonna not repeat all the whereases. I think it'll be self-evident that they're there. Members of the Orange County School Board are saddened and outraged by recent events that demonstrate the prejudice and, just and injustice that persists in our country. 
Racism and hate have no place in our schools or our society, and we must protect the constitutional rights of every person who lives, works, and learns in our community. We cannot be silent. We urgently must act to stop the racial injustice that harms and anguishes black people who are our family, friends, neighbors, students, staff members, and fellow Americans. We must listen. Those who have endured discrimination and intolerance deserve to be heard as they share the stories and truth about their experiences and feelings. And we must seek with great empathy to understand their challenges and their pain. We must learn. It is time to engage our community in meaningful and honest conversation about racial inequity, to build alliances with those committed to justice for all, and to work together to support our shared convic conviction that racism must end. We must lead. Each of us, individually and collectively, is responsible for creating and nurturing an anti-racist learning environment where every child is respected and valued for who they are, regardless of their skin color. We must actively acknowledge, address, and prevent racial bias that occurs as a result of division policies, practices, and actions, and we must do better. Our school division can be and will be a sanctuary of safety in our community and a beacon of light for the world as we build and strengthen trust with those we serve and we model the acceptance of all people. Therefore, we, members of the Orange County School Board, stand, stand steadfast in our commitment to foster an inclusive educational environment where every student, teacher, support professional, parent, and community member is treated with dignity and respect. This resolution was moved for a vote by Jim Hopkins, and it um, voted past uh, three. There were two people absent, but I do want to remind you this was what our school board said two years ago. I want to welcome Dr. Hornick. My first time meeting you tonight. Thank you for uh, being our new superintendent. We look forward to a great relationship with you and your leadership. And uh, thank you school board members too and Ms. Byram uh, for including me last minute, thank you. Uh, I speak in opposition to both resolutions. One hasn't been passed yet, it's mighty close. I speak against that one. I won't spend much time tonight on that one. I wanna speak and encourage you, uh, school board members, to please rescind your resolution on divisive content. I'm the grandfather of biracial children. And I want them to go to schools, and they go in a to a, a school system that neighbors us, Spotsylvania school systems, and I want them to learn our history. When I went to school, Virginia schools, and elsewhere, in my entire school, I grew up in the 1960s, during the Civil Rights Movement. Not one school I went to taught me about what was going on not the churches that I went to, white churches. It was a non-issue. I don't want my children to grow up that way. We need to know our history. Let me just encourage you, please, to read some books that I've been reading, The Color of Compromise, The Truth About the American Church's Complicity in Racism by Jamar Tisby. I encourage you to read Richmond's Unhealed History, some of the best history I've ever written, uh, read. I also include you, uh, encourage you to maybe read Down from the Mountain about, about a school superintendent in South Carolina who um, was told by the school that he, they didn't want him to address the inequities in the minority students and the poor students in the county who couldn't read as well as the white students. And the reason the outstanding citizen that came to him said was my husband owns a sawmill and if they learn to read he won't have any workers by the way that superintendent wrote this book is dr renfro clark manning does that ring a bell 
He was the superintendent here in Orange County from 1969 to 1996. Is this divisive content? Is this divisive content? Is this divisive content? And is the Bible divisive content? Some of you are good about quoting the Bible. Read Song of Solomon. If you want to read about hypersexuality, beautiful poetry about human sexuality. There's infanticide in the Bible, genocide, rape. How are you going to make decisions on that? You've got a problem. Thank you. The next speaker is Jude Melton. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Jude Melton. And I want to begin by thanking Paige and Jones for actually listening to the input of the community and not allowing the school board to serve as a platform for their own political agendas. I also want to say thank you for not accepting Mr. Hopkins' proposal to limit public comment as this would be an attack on our very democracy. As Orange County schools begin to open their door doors, I urge you as elected public servants to actually serve the public. We do not want your views or political stances to get in the way of our education. As a student, I have been taught throughout my education, led by excellent teachers, to always think critically, thoroughly research topics, listen to input from others, and make informed choices. I urge you as a board to do the same. Vote down the divisive content resolution and do not proceed with the sexually explicit resolution. It is now the time to admit that your proposals are not backed by the public support and are not academically grounded and are not best for the students of Orange County Public Schools. Meeting after meeting, we as the students that would be directly impacted come here and stand up for what is right and repeatedly speak out against these bigoted and hate-felt resolutions. Now is the time for progression, not regression. Please listen to what your community wants and most importantly, listen to the students whose lives you will be directly impacting if you um, pass these resolutions. We do not want these resolutions to come to our schools. Now is the time for healing, not the time for you to create more pain in our community. Thank you for your, thank you. And that's all the speakers we have signed up. Okay. So at this time, hearing no other speakers, I will declare public comment closed. And at this time, I will con continue with business and turn it over to Dr. Hornick. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, we have uh, one issue here on the docket this evening. And I'll invite uh, Mr. Marshall Rudder to come forward to discuss a recommendation for renewal of a contract with Honeywell Services. Thank you, Dr. Hornick, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, just like stated, uh, tonight's agenda item is to uh, renew the service agreement with Honeywell Building, Building Solutions, who handles our HVAC contract for all our large equipment and all our 10 facilities. Okay, so this is presented for first read. Are there any questions? Of No, I just I believe last year when we were at this point, we were uh, <clears throat> the same questions came up that were answered and uh, reliable uh, service from the vendor. That's so that's correct, Mr. Jones. Uh, actually, you'll see that the cost this year is reduced from last year's renewal. Uh, I did remove one item of, from the contract, which uh, was a reduction uh, in which we uh, took the programming of our controls and we awarded that to ABM for a small portion, just a redirection. They were better suited to handle the equipment in our building, sir. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Yes. Just, just, uh, just remind me of what, what I know it covers. You've told uh, Jenna the facility, the things that it covers, but what kind of things? I mean, do 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 they automatically do replacements or or what what? Do we, it's a great question, Mr. Hopkins. Uh, no replacements uh, as part of this contract. This is uh, the preventative maintenance. Uh, they 
uh, we have a full comprehensive repair. Uh, if a chiller goes down, um, chillers are in the neighborhood of about $200,000. Uh, compressor can cost as much as $40,000. Uh, we have two at Prospect, two at Locust Grove Elementary, two uh, screw type chillers at Locust Grove Middle School. The high school has two air cooled chillers. Uh, very expensive, large pieces of equipment that Honeywell is required uh, to maintain and do the preventive maintenance and then repair if it fails. As well as several large rooftop units here at Teague and uh, in other facilities across the division, sir. Okay. Thank you. And the boilers as well. <laughs> and just to clarify, this is a uh, the second renewal of a one year contract for up to five years. That's great. Okay. Uh, that's correct, Ms. Quintern. Uh, this uh, would be the third year going in, second renewal. Yes, ma'am. Mike, is everybody uh, comfortable with going ahead and approving this? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. I make a motion we approve the contract with Honeywell Building mm -hmm. Solutions as presented. Okay, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Thank yes, you, Marshal. Thank you, Madam Chair. So at that time, that concludes all the business. Um, I will entertain um, closed session motion please madam chair pursuant to 2.2-3711a of the code of virginia the orange county school board will convene a closed meeting for the following discussion of personnel or the performance of a division employee as authorized by section 2.2-3711a1 of the code of virginia for resignation termination transfer employment salary adjustment and retirement of employees thank you can i have a second i'll second all in favor by saying aye. 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 Thank you. We're in closed session. Thank you.